days turn to weeks as the vanguard marched south. Expected travel time to the destination had increased with the addition of the tradesmen and civilians, but no complaints were ever raised. I suspect that the Evan Vanguard soldiers are happy to have actual professional chefs to prepare their meals and armor smiths to keep their equipment in working order. Rigo Bolan of Lieutenant Kieran Thackeray's Eben Falcon scout unit discovered an animal that had been torn to shreds by claws or teeth this morning. Not taking any chances, the Vanguard is now on high alert. Civilians are told only that travelling in a new land can be dangerous and they must be prepared for anything. They've been ordered to stay close to the caravan and not wander off by themselves. Several days have passed since we first discovered the shredded animal remains. Off in the distance, I can make out blurs that seem to be moving with us. Is something really out there? Or is the long trek making us paranoid? And more importantly, if something is out there, are we leading it? Or are we being led? I guess only time will tell. At dawn, our greatest fears were realised. A warband of Char ambushed us from the brush. The Vanguard always believed their battle would be against the Char, just not this far south. Though the Vanguard were used to the horrors of Char battles, the civilians travelling with them were not. Many broke off from the caravan, fleeing in terror as the monsters set upon us. We struggled to maintain our defences while returning those who had fled to the safety of the caravan. Questions danced in my mind during the fray. What were these Char doing here? Were they leftovers from the failed assault against Orr? Were they a herald of tragedies to come? Six years ago, a dragon rose in Aston. It flew south, killing and corrupting everything in its path. I stood beneath the dragon as it passed overhead. I survived where others did not. All across Tyria, I found others who told of destruction caused by the dragons. Humans in Silvara battling undead that swarmed their shores. A surf driven from their underground cities. Joining together, we gave birth to a mighty organization, the Fidget. We're proud that you have chosen to serve alongside us. Your mentor will be Ford, one of our finest soldiers and the most stalwart Norn I know. He'll teach you to fight with the Vigil. The Vigil was created to fight the dragons, to destroy them before they destroy us. Some must fight so that all may be free. Welcome to the Vigil. Well, hello there. We are back part 60 at last. Hello, everybody. How's it going? I hope we're doing good. Returning with Tyrix Ripjaw here uh, with a slightly different intro to what I was originally anticipating. I believe at the end of the last episode, we just went through the Asura Gate here and immediately uh, I was hoping to start today's episode with Ebonhawk on the other side. However, uh, things have come up in real life. And uh, for those of you who are watching this in serial and may not realize... Uh, I wanted to talk about them. It's actually been a month since the last video. It's been quite a while. There's a ton of stuff that's happened between the two productions that kind of put this on hold. Uh, and I wanted to talk about it a bit. So, a lot has happened with the game very recently. Uh, there was a very, very big Living World update, which as this series goes along, we'll start talking about what that is and how that works. Uh, which expanded the playable space way off in the south. So there was a big release there, which uh, we covered. It's currently uh, a World Cup summer, so I've been pretty busy with that. There was a huge controversy revolving around one of the devs on Twitter, leading to a couple of firings uh, and an awful lot of outside attention and focus on Guild Wars. A big controversy to cover there. And uh, several other things. There was a big balance patch, which broke some of my plans for the series. Uh, one of the dungeons upcoming was heavily revolving around a certain skill that the devs have now completely changed. Uh, and also, just this week, if you look on the top right here, you can see we're currently under the effect of the Festival of the Four Winds. Uh, so, as I mentioned back when the Super Adventure Box came out, which was the previous festival, uh, every couple of months for Guild Wars, something big revolves into the game that's festival-related. 
uh, that is temporary content people can play for a little while and leave. So they do something special at Halloween, they do something special at Christmas, and so on. And uh, a, a new big one was just announced and revealed and dropped in the game, which I've been spending a lot of time covering. So it's just been a crazy month, and uh, the LP's been on hold. So I'm feeling probably as many of you might be a little bit out of the loop. Uh, today's video might be a little bit shorter or slightly different to what the original plan was, but we'll start rolling in uh, ASAP. I guess let's do a very quick recap of the story. We, Tyrix, are with the Vigil, seeing what they are interested in in terms of gearing the free peoples of Tyria to take the fight against the Elder Dragons. So currently in the timeline, we're watching what the Vigil are doing while the Order of Whispers are escorting Demi Beetlestone away from her home. Uh, we're watching what the Vigil are doing while the Derman Priory are currently messing around in the Shiver Peak Mountains and dealing with the threat of the Sanguinary Blade. So we're about there. And we're seeing what the Vigil have their eyes on, which is stuff to do with Ebon Hawk, a city we've heard a lot about, uh, a human bastion of resistance to the Char, uh, who have been warring with the Char for many, many, many years, but a peace treaty is currently being enacted. Uh, if you read one of the novels about the game, Ghosts of Ascalon, you can kind of see how this all started. Uh, but the Vigil want to make sure that this treaty goes well, and they're worried it might not. They're worried that separatist movements might be throwing a spanner in the works. So we were tasked by the leader of the vigil, Almora Soulkeeper, herself a char, uh, to come through this uh, surrogate and check out what's going on. General Almora, as it says here, has asked me to assist Warmaster Forgal on a mission to Ascalon, where the treaty at Ebonhawk is in jeopardy from renegades. The vigil wants the peace to succeed. So that's about it. We've heard a ton about Ebonhawk. It's time to finally... And I'm sorry you had to wait a month for this to see it. A fragile piece. Let's head on it. Secure the gate. Don't let the renegades escape. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's not looking too good. There's a fire here immediately. A ton of soldiers and troopers. These guys, Ebon Vanguard soldiers, charging on. And, of course, when we joined the vigil, we also met this dude, Warmaster Forgal Kernson, a Norn who uh, even rivals us in size. He says, stop babbling and start fighting. We've got work to do. <laughs> I wonder how many of you in the audience want me to say that, uh, want to say that to me sometimes. So, yes, sir. Uh, but hold on, I want to babble. What else is going on? So the Asura set up this gate. This gate is such a crucial, important uh, thing to keep Ebonhawk safe in the more recent years. That ability for the humans to send supplies through to this city and keep it fortified, despite being so far away, has been really important. Um, and so what, what do the Asura say? They say, the Char are everywhere! They're overwhelming the Vanguard! Uh, and we can be ferocious or have dignity. Are you cowards or soldiers? Fight! You think you can do better? We'll show you. That's the spirit. Is he actually going to run off and fight now? It sounds like we convinced him there. There's another guy here, Gate Operator Steban. My genius is well known. Uh, who says, look at this mess. Somebody has to stop the Char before they burn the city down. So it's still Char attacking the city, it seems. Uh, renegade Char that don't want the peace treaty. Even though Smoder of the Iron Legion is an advocate for it. Uh, so here we can't be ferocious. Uh, and I'm just going to say to him, you've done well here, but it's time for the Vigil to take over. Take a breather. That's kind of you, stranger. I will, but I'll be back in the fight in no time. Well, we'll be waiting for you, I guess, at that point. So there's tons of exploration to do in this city. Uh, it's one of the most unique areas in... Tyria, in my opinion, that's not like a formal city like Divinity's Reach, uh, but one step at a time, I suppose. Oh god, there's already bodies and things on the floor, I guess. Let's see what we've got. Here's Commander Samuelson, who is a reasonably interesting human character, for what it's worth. What do you have to say, Samuelson? Welcome to Ebonhawk, recruit. I... by Raven's wings, what in the mists is happening here? It's the Vigil. Thank Balthazar, you're just in time. I'm Samuelson, Wade Samuelson, commander of Ascalon. I'm Warmaster Kernson, and this is my new recruit. Give me a status report. Here's the problem. A bunch of Char renegades smuggled explosives into the city. They're trying to blow up onto the outer walls. The Ebon Vanguard stopped the demolition team, but renegade forces are attacking everywhere, from here to the central plaza. That sounds like a blood-covered mess, Commander. How can we help? We have to get to the city central plaza. Turn right, head down the road, and through the crossing. You'll see a big statue at the center of the square. Once we take the square, 
The Vanguard can do the rest. But without a rally point, we're falling apart. Who are these renegades? What do they want with Ebonhawk? They're Char who disobeyed the orders of the High Legions. These idiots would rather die than make peace with humans. And they're dangerous. We'll capture the plaza, Commander. And teach a lesson to any renegades we find along the way. Ready, recruit. Move out. Fall? The hell it will. The hell it will while I'm here. Oh my god, this is so cool. Forkle Festival is quite the badass. I love the thought that we're two, like, super military-minded guys that are just, like, bros. I can imagine us being in some kind of action movie, like these super high testosterone workout action movies. This is ridiculous. I like that he's got a vested interest, but it's so cool being here on Terex, you know? As a char, defending Ebonhawk is such a cool, like, twist. Uh, stop babbling. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. I guess we have to be subordinate to him. I'm at your service, Terex. We're grateful for all of your help here. Okay. Who are you again? Samuelson? We've not met you before. My ma my name's Commander Samuelson, and I'm the Duke of Ebonhawk. So, he how he became the Duke of Ebonhawk, we might not hear just yet, uh, but it's kind of cool. Uh, by what authority do you rule this city? He says, my forefathers were the kings of Ascon. Here we go. And I'll be damned if I let those renegades destroy their last legacy. So, I don't know whether the devs will ever really go super deep into this. But Samuelson essentially has royal blood. We've heard in the lore before that there was one great man, King Doric. And all royals, like Jenna in, in Divinity's Reach, like Adelburn, whose ghost we fought in the Ascon catacombs Tyrix himself saw... These people are all descended from the, the, of the same bloodline, from King Doric. And it's kind of amazing to think that Samuelson, if push came to shove, is is sort of in that ballpark, you know? Uh, who are the Evan Vanguard? Are they part of Kryter? And he says, we are the sons and daughters of Ascalon. Jenna is our ally, but not our queen. Remember, this is Guild Wars 2. The original game was all about humans, and there were different human nations that all felt very distinct and separate from one another. It's easy to forget that in Guild Wars 2 when we start looking at multiple races, but the Ascalonians are not Crichtons to any real degree, and Jenna's their ally, as he says, but, you know, we're dealing with a very different people here, a much more war-torn people. We've heard the, the townspeople in some of the previous episodes of the LP talking about how they all rug heroes and everybody respects them heavily and they're kind of handsome in a way but you know they have a very different perspective on the world to say your common Crichton who has problems with centaurs and bandits but nothing on this level right so this is Ebonhawk those are the gates to Ebonhawk all the way up there a really beautiful set piece for the world there's some amazing concept art we were all gawking at for years before the game came out uh, so to finally see that in game I think was a disappointment for some because it didn't look as cool as the concept art but you know one of those big moments and uh, we'll be walking through through those leaving the city before long. I think I've taken a bit of a long route here. There was another way through. Uh, but all right, here we go. So, Tyrix, Christ, when was the last time we were fighting on Tyrix? A long time ago, I'm sure. Nice, and we get to take uh, an enemy char out straight away. Obviously, Tyrix doesn't feel bad about this because, let's be real here, uh, he's already fought a ton of char. They were just Flame Legion. These aren't necessarily Flame Legion, but, you know, we're, we're, we're no strangers to cutting them down. The Char have never been strangers to cutting their own brethren down, I would say. You don't get such a militaristic nation without, you know, a bit of infighting, right? Let's raise uh, as many Ebon Vanguard as we can before trying to actually take on some of these fights. All right. Oh, God, this guy's coming at us uh, hard here. So, yeah, we got our Frenzy. We've got our Greatsword. Hopefully, you guys remember how all these skills work. We talked a ton about it, obviously, last time we were in Ascon Catacombs. Now, Tyrix, above all of my characters, has suffered the gravest wounds from his uh, experience in the Catacombs. And I was kind of thinking of maybe changing the way we look a little bit to represent that maybe we've been crippled and damaged from being in there. There's some really cool skins that give you, like, a peg leg and stuff. Do you guys think that would be cool? Let me know if you do, and we'll totally go for it. Um... But yeah, I guess uh, that was one of the little things I wanted to do as we started Vigil, but oh, there's so many moving pieces, uh, it may have slipped my mind. Certainly did now that it's been a month since we were able to get in and actually play. Okay, so anyway, they've been taken out. Here you can see that there's a territory with a red ring around it. Uh, and this is a bit like how PvP works in this game, in the what you're going to want to do, and I'm sure we've seen this mechanic many times, is clear out all your opposition within the territory. And then you can sort of capture it for yourself. You'll see the red ring becomes blue. And now we're basically claiming this land for, for us. Vanguard, form up and hold this area. 
We'll advance toward the crossing. So as you can see, uh, Samuelson is uh, now asking us to push forward. Interestingly, we haven't seen Fogel anywhere. Fogel seems to have just decided that he's going to defend at the entrance, maybe. I'm not sure. Interestingly, this renegade had a yellow uh, nameplate above him, which kind of means that he's not necessarily hostile. He's neutral, uh, but we killed him just the same anyway. Uh, we got some guys with us. Here's a bull near Samuelson. Uh, he has the same dialogue as before. Let's keep on moving. Uh, we want to go deeper into the city now. Remember, he said we need to go to the Plaza of the Gods, I think they called it. I mean, we may not be Crichton here in Ascalion, but we're still human. We still believe in the power of the six, and we still worship them. So you're going to find that they've got some representations of that uh, closer to the heart of the city. Here's our next area on the road that we want to take out. Tons of fighting back then. I'm going to... Back there. I'm going to assume that our NPCs can deal with it, though. Let's uh, take these guys down as best we can. Kill them all! So the Renegades are quite a rich and detailed faction. They have a leader, uh, and you'll be kind of surprised at the backstory. I, I think the backstory of the Renegades is one of the things that most Guild Wars 2 players kind of forget. So I'm really excited to show you guys and talk about it because there's some really interesting like implications as to where they came from and who's leading them right now. Uh, especially considering we're doing this with the Vigil. Hmm. Those of you who know what I'm hitting at there will be uh, probably quite excited to see that. The crossing is secure. Vanguard, defend us here. We'll take care of the troublemakers in the square. Oh, this is so cool, seeing all these guys with bows fighting against a renegade with a rifle. It just shows that mix of technology that Guild Wars 2's got, you know, with old fantasy stuff and some of the newer higher tech stuff, especially when you start dealing with the char, with their tanks and submarines and whatnot. Let's res these guys. He can see some propaganda on the walls. That's uh, human propaganda representing the char as beasts. Actually translatable, the text there. Um, once we're done with this defense, we can start interacting at a much deeper level with the city. And we can start reading the plaques and looking at actually what's going on. Uh, and there's some really, really awesome things here. They really do a very deep dive into the mindset of the people living in the city. Just imagine, for hundreds of years, your parents, your parents' parents, everyone you've ever known, being killed by char, learning to hate the char. And now... Some outsiders, essentially, are just telling you, oh, no, you have a treat peace treaty now. Let's just deal with it. You know, th th these are hard things for these people to grasp. All right, so anyway, there we go. That's the middle. Your timing was perfect, Warmaster Kernson. I can't thank you enough. The renegades are getting bolder. This is the first time they've ever tried to bomb the fortress from the inside. New tactics may signify a new leader. You think they finally found a shot caller with half a brain? Think it. I know it. He's a char named Ajax Anvilburn, and that rotter's a thorn in my side. Do you know anything about Anvilburn? Some way we could track him down and stop him. Scouts tell us the renegades have a camp outside Ebonhawk, but my troops are tied up defending the treaty location. The Ebon Vanguard hasn't had a chance to check it, but if I had to guess, I'd say either he's there or his soldiers are. We'll take a look, Commander. Ill-disciplined thugs like these should be easy to find. Are they ill-disciplined? I mean, maybe in his estimation. Oh, was somebody talking there? I'm not sure. All right, cool. So there you go. A fragile piece completed. Uh, a very basic little defense of Evanhawk set up here. What do we want in terms of gear? Our gear that we got a while ago to go into the depths of Tyria and deal with Adelburn is actually still better than what the story is offering us right now. So I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll just pick this. Uh, we get a level from that as well, though. That's nice. It's good to see Terex continuing to get a little bit stronger here. We'll go with the Precision and Ferocity Ring, uh, which will just help us do a lot more damage, and we'll be getting more stuff soon. All right, so, cool. Uh, Samuelson, what's Greetings, up? Greetings, friend. He says, we need to hurry. Those char are causing devastation. Well, hang on. Who are you? My name's Samuelson. I'm the Duke of Ebonhawk. By what authority? It seems weird. They've basically repackaged the same dialogue here. Uh, understood, Commander. We'll do all we can. That's great. Uh, where's Fogel? Is he just back at the entrance? Oh my god, we're gonna have a bit of a walk to find him and actually see what he has to say if he has new dialogue from the end of the instance. I'm gonna do it though. I can't I can't help myself, guys. I'll, I'll just cut it, I guess. I'll see you back at the entrance where the Asura were. One, one moment. Let's go. You know, I, I wonder whether it's just that he bugged, maybe, <laughs> on his way in. Hey, dudes. Stop babbling and start fighting. Great. Wow, he's got so much to offer us. Well, there you go. All right. So we are now in a place called the Fields of Ruin. 
Uh, and so here's the Asura Gate that we entered from. This is the other side of where we entered from Divinity's Reach. And just to be very clear on the world map, this is where we are now, okay? So the Black Citadel is all the way over here. This is all the exploration we did way back when we started our adventure. Uh, this was the Ogre area, which was the most distant we'd ever came. And all the way over here to the very south is Ebonhawk. Now, Ebonhawk is not a city map all in its own. Before the game came out, many of us were wondering whether it was going to be that. It's not. It's just a corner of what is a regular explorable. So, while Divinity's Reach doesn't have any enemies in it, or the Black Citadel doesn't have any enemies in it, no real content, Ebonhawk's different. Ebonhawk, because it's a part of the real world, because it's a level 30-ish zone, you will find that there's more to do here than you'd find in a conventional city. There are achievements to get here. There's all kinds of stuff. And that's what makes it really special. It's actually got a ton of depth. Um, too much probably for us to be able to get it all Excelsior. in the series. Not without this becoming hundreds of videos, as I find myself saying all the time. Uh, but we'll give you... I, I'll at least make sure to talk about the main things. So the Asura are now calmed down. They say, uh, may I assist you? Well, how hard was it to set up an Asura gate here in Ebonhawk? Extremely difficult. The inherited uh, configuration was incorrect. Those who, who set it up didn't share my level of intellect. Once I solved the crystal misalignments, humans became passing, began passing through normally. Okay, what about your friend? You had an assistant before, didn't you? Pretty sure somewhere around here you had someone. There'll be all kinds of different dialogue. You can see people moving in and out of the towns. That's an Ebon Vanguard soldier here. So this doesn't look like a Seraph. It doesn't look like uh, anyone really we've seen so far. They have their own distinct armor sets and appearance. Operator, there's a ripple in the portal. It's destabilizing. Hmm. Aha. The gate fixator projection has been reversed. I have solved the case yet again. Brilliant. These Asura are so quick to pat themselves on the back. But what's really cool is you get the Ebon Hat Vanguard soldiers that I just showed off. But then also Fallen Angels. Now remember, we talked very briefly about these in the last part. Fallen Angels are Crichtons. They're Seraph that have come through to help their Ascalonian brothers. They're not really obliged to, but they do so. And so here you can see a male one and a female one talking to each other. You'll see here Fallen Hand, and they've got the flavor text under their nameplate, which I love so much. The Queen's Hand in Ebonhawk. So this is Jenna's influence. People back in Divinity's Reach probably hate the thought of supplies and military being spent all the way over here on this struggle. But Jenna is trying to unify everyone, just as the Vigil are here, really. And that's why you know, the Order is such a great friend to her. But yeah, so these guys look like Seraph, but they're generally speaking painted all in black and they have like different kind of gear. So a Fallen Angel was one of the earliest pieces of lore I remember being really struck by about Guild Wars 2 and I wanted so badly to basically make one. I haven't in the end, but you totally could. You could role play and make a Fallen Angel and wear that gear and die it the correct way. Be pretty great. Right, so, uh, yeah, what is there to do in Ebonhawk? Well, tons. First of all, there are crafting stations all over the place. There's a bank, there's a trading post. Pretty much any uh, service you as a player, and you can see there's a, a signpost representing you there. Any service you as a player might want, uh, you can get here. It's just not really treated that much by the player base as, a, uh, you know, not many people use this location is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but, you know, there are these anvils here and I could do armor smithing if Tyrix had learned how to do a bit of that. We did show off a bit of weapon smithing before. Look, there's tailoring here. The whole set is available. You, there's chefing and hearths that you can uh, cook all kinds of different things on. So I've always liked Ebonhawk for that, for its potency, just as a, an actual realistic place you as a player could go to use its various services. So here's the propaganda and you'll notice I'm actually under the effects of a renowned heart quest right now which says to tear down propaganda talk down sympathizers and knock on doors to find potential separatist hideouts so we won't spend ages doing this but basically across all of the city you could try and change public opinion about the char because there are a lot of separatists humans who want the war to go on who can't bear becoming friends with these people who have inflicted so much pain on them. Just as the Char have the renegades, the humans have the separatists. So here's a suspicious door. I can knock on it, and they're gonna have a hell of a, have a fight here. And look, a separatist basher comes out who I can beat up. How can you sell and shop while Char roam free on Ascalonian soil? Uh, that guy, here you go. So there's a guy shouting various, uh, spouting propaganda and things over here. 
who we can maybe talk down. You'll see there's an event going on with different morale. The events here, a lot of people don't realize how well detailed they are. There's like a prison area in the town that separatists get caught and go to, and then you can watch them sneakily blow one another out and then rampage through the town, and they chain to each other in really intelligent, smart ways. It's kind of beautiful, to be honest. Moving back to the center... You can see this kind of gateway here, which I always wondered if it was going to become a dungeon back at release. But you do have some memorial plaques uh, for the town. This says, for the men who st who lived to guard us all, they stood defiant atop the wall. Here, fear not the cost in blood or gold, mourn not the lost, for they'll never grow old. I love these little things here. It really gives you a sense of the deep history. If here they fall, they shall live on whenever you uh, cry for Ascalon. And then one final memorial plaque here. Come to the fore, O sons of Ascalon. We fight once more. The battle lines are drawn. This is a city that has known nothing but war. Here you get priests to the various human gods. A priest of Grenthir, priest of Dwena. We as a char probably don't want anything to do with that. But uh, but yeah, you know, the list goes on. One of the coolest other things here is... Uh, we can actually find one of them here. In the most recent videos, you've been hearing lore from stories, short stories. The short story you're listening to is this. It's called The Founding. And basically, littered all over Ebonhawk are excerpts from the founding, which you find in various orders. So the first one I found here playing the game with you guys today is volume number nine. There's like 15 to 20 volumes or something. There's loads of them. But if you find all the volumes and piece them all to together in the correct order, you do hear about the founding in the city. And that's what I've been reading to you guys as these videos have been going along. But it's actually a hidden thing here in this city. And what's even cooler, though is this is one of the first examples of a hidden achievement in the game. So, uh, if I press H, I've shown you this before, there is the achievement section of our user interface, and there's all kinds of different things we can do. If we go to General, and look at the Explorer section, now I've already completed basically all of this stuff, but one of the uh, achievements here is, it might be History Buff, it's not History Buff, one of them here is uh, an achievement that only appears if you find all of the books. I think it's called Speed Reader or something. So quite a lot of the time, there'll be achievements in the game that are obvious they're there. So this, Legendary Armorer, I don't own, but I know it exists. There are also secret achievements, hidden ones that you won't know they exist until you get it. And they were very rare back at the release of the game, but one of the first hidden achievements ever added to Guild Wars 2 was this with the founding here in Ebonhawk. Um, so yeah, there's just a fantastic number of different things to talk about. There's a beautiful graveyard, there's a Legend of Zelda reference, loads of things to do. Uh, but I guess I, I will stop rambling there, and um, as I said, because we've had a bit of a big break, we're half an hour into the video already, I'll leave this one here, I know it's a little bit shorter than normal. We'll leave this here. I'll be back tomorrow, guys. We'll get back into the swing of things. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I'll talk to you a lot more about some of the other fun little things here at Ebonhawk that you can see and do, some of which is uh, really close by. And we'll go on to deal with this fight against the Renegades and see just how the Vigil end up in the much more serious matters of things like, oh, I don't know, Claw Island. They will eventually be there. Over the next few episodes, I'm hoping to show you how. So cheers, guys. I hope you enjoyed the adventure with Tyrex. It's good to be back, and I'll see you very soon. The Char won't be happy until we're all dead. Stand with the Separatists! You think the Char will just leave after the treaty? Arm yourselves! Fight for your survival! Corporal Dian Fermati pursued a young couple who had taken off. Unfortunately for them, the Char found them first. Unwilling to leave them to die, Dian rushed in against far greater numbers. Despite the odds, he kept the Char at bay and held out long enough for help to reach them. Sadly, the effort cost Dian his life. Dian died a hero's death that day. We were by his side when he passed from this world into the mists. He wore a smile on his face as he drifted off, eased by his dying wish. Just one more drink of rum. The craftsmen are afraid. They were not prepared to be assaulted while we moved. Perhaps they thought the threat in the south was a passing madness from King Adelman? Or did the king really know the horror that waited us here? Did the civilians forget the terrible searing and the pain that came with it? Had the return of the Ebon Vanguard lulled them into a false belief that they were safe? I pondered these questions as we continued to make our way south. Gwen continues to lead the caravan with firm resolve. Her speeches and encouragement lift the spirits. She has come so far since joining the Vanguard as a frail child. 
She is a true successor to Captain Langmar. It has been more than a week since we first ran into the Char. Their attacks continue, but at random intervals. Sometimes we have a day of peace, sometimes only hours. Defensive efforts are starting to take their toll, but the soldiers put up a brave front for those they're protecting. This morning's attack took the lives of two more brave vanguard soldiers. A small service was held for them, delaying our journey southward. We can finally see our destination, the mountain range that separates Ascalon from the Crystal Desert. That's where we'll find our new home. The very thought lifts our spirits. Kieran suggests that we make for a mountain slope to the southwest, and Captain Gwen agrees. From there, we can move in and set up a camp in the pass that leads through to the desert. The trek will be dangerous. We must cross an open plain where we will be pounced upon by the char. Will we survive? Only the six know. As night fell on what was to be our last day on the plains, the massive assault began. There seemed to be no end to the murderous char. When one fell, two or three others were there to take its place. Dawn was barely breaking when Koro Sagewind called for people to break for the hills. Lawrence Crafton and Rigo Bolan stood guard while Koro cast the greatest illusion I would ever witness in this lifetime. A mystical army arrived from the north. Most of the char broke off and, in feral bloodlust, charged the illusion. Koro's trick brought us the time we needed to prepare for the next assault. Thank you.